And we're back with Off the Press on uh, Plus TV Africa. G.D. Johnson joins us this morning. He's a senior lecturer of the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, G.D., it's good to have you join us. Uh, can I say happy, you know, election eve? <laughs> I like to say happy, you know, wish you happy something. Well, I'm not sure G.D. can hear us, but hopefully we're able to connect with him. Uh, I'll start off with the leadership news we put down. We have several papers to go through, and that's courtesy of our paper vendor. Now, the leadership says 14 states in dramatic governorship contest. And that's what it is. It's fight to finish in Lagos, Bauchi, Kaduna, Gombe, Delta, Adamawa, yes. Rivers, Kanu, Eboy, Enugu, Ogun, Oyon, uh, Sokoto, Nasarawa. That's it. 11 governors in race for second term. INEC, Army Warrant Personnel, and please restrict movement for 18 hours. That has always been the case. But Kofi, you know that that's also a, a point of dispute and conversation. That when we have elections, what's, what's with the whole shutting down the entire economy? Can we have elections and have people, uh, you know, go on uh, with, go about their businesses well, I, I can't wait to share the thoughts of GDA on this one. President Mohammed Buhari to successor, sustain my anti-corruption fight. And I saw some tweet. Somebody said, Baba, you don't do anything. Presidential poll, I will win in court, says OB. And just before we move away from the leadership, competency will be my basis for appointment. Oh, that's what the president-elect is quoted to say. And then again, you find aviation workers secure federal government or sue federal government over proposed concession of airports. This conversation has been going on for a very long time. I owe you no apology. Go to court. Look, man, there's Omoshere or Mishere. Uh, I hope I got that correctly. That's about the uh, crisis in the APC. Narrow and fuel scarcity, inflation push. 24 million Nigerians into hunger. It's not something you want to think about. That's it this morning on, on, on the leadership. Important questions that uh, you asked, Mercy. Let's go over to the punch this morning uh, with these headlines. Uh, Nigeria needs competence, not national unity government. As uh, the uh, president, like Bola Metinbu, um, still struggling, um, uh, trying and uh, striving to improve his legitimacy because that's always going to be difficult, even if he emerges at the end of the day. Um, more from the punch. Leadership not by force. Uh, good luck, Jonathan. It's a very funny one. Leadership not by force. So like we say in Nigerian pigeon, leadership not be by force. Um, polls, Lagos, Kanu, Rivers, governorship candidates face tough battles. Uh, yes, so Mickey, uh, governor of Lake Rivers State, made a live broadcast yesterday, and he got people talking. Uh, threats ahead of Saturday polls. Warisom Abdul Salami. States insist on contempt charge against Malami Emir Fiele. Uh, we have IPOB rejects 10th deadliest terror group ranking. Okay. Uh, three feared killed as party supporters clash in Lagos, Ogun, Oyo. And unions protest airport concession sue Minister Fan. And uh, we see a picture story there. Uh, readiness of uh, officers of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps remember when they were asking Nigerians to allow them to use guns. And you can see they're brandishing their weapons ahead of uh, the state governorship and House of Assembly elections in Abuja on Thursday. And don't, they have their own, um, I think, their own local elections in Abuja as well. But um, uh, remains to be seen what, what that is to translate into any, any actual security and protection on the ground. Those are the headlines on the front page of, uh, of The Punch. Well, we take attention from the punch now, and let's quickly look at the Daily Trust newspaper. It talks about uh, the elections tomorrow. Security operatives on red alerts in state, and a peace committee worried over violence, intimidation, and threats. Now, and again, there's also another video of MC Oluoma uh, threatening uh, a sect of people, to be very precise. I mean, let's say the way it is, Igbos. If you don't, you don't go to vote for the APC, stay at home. 
Now, this also is generating too many, you know, controversies and, and questions. And people are saying, what exactly is going on? Is this not a crime? What does the Electoral Act say about this? Now, apart from the Electoral Act, if you look at the Constitution, is there any provision? Is this not a crime? How come the police is not involved? How can we even, you know, have party uh, members of political parties projecting this kind of narrative? I mean, this, is, this would actually pass for voter threat and intimidation. If you look at the number of persons who actually register for voting election and then you look at the number of turnout, over time we always say voter apathy and that's because people are not interested. That's the cliche. But I think that we need to begin to expand. But like again, uh, GD Johnson will be here to share his thoughts on all of this one. IPOP ranked war the third deadliest group. Very interesting. How I will form my cabinet, that's what the president-elect is quoted to say, 17 dying, Kanu auto crash. And just before we move away, National Assembly leadership, while we're delaying zoning till after governorship polls, Adamu is quoted to say, finance minister urges up incoming administration to increase VAT to 10%, VAT of what? You want to ask. Girl, six mistakes, petrol for kerosene and bond self while learning to cook. Wow. Well, that's it this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. All right, we'll take a final one. Uh, we have uh, an interesting addition to the other press family. It's an environmental newspaper called Nature News. Uh, lead story there, Echo Bank, IITA, um, partner to support 16,000 youth through AGRIC. Um, that is the, uh, the, the world-renowned IITA. It's very important uh, 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 organization, uh, Tropical Agriculture, the Institute of International, uh, of Tropical Agriculture, sorry. Uh, Nigeria produced 1.3 million barrels per day, accrued in February, missed target by 500,000 barrels per day. OPEC, SPDC, lifts force majeure on bony exports. Uh, that's some good news. Uh, rivers pipeline explosion shell fail to protect facilities, CAP, that's a Corporate Accountability and Public Affairs uh, uh, Organization, all right? Um, more from Nature News, Nigeria, 54 others suffer shortage of health workers. Um, I think that uh, reminds us of what the Minister of Labor, uh, Dr. Chris Ngige, said about um, the health workers in the country have more than enough. Um, IMF approves first batch of climate resilience loans. Uh, we're going to probably go back for these notes. And death toll rises as Cyclone Freddy ravages Africa. Some really, really worrying news there. Uh, Jede Johnson, good morning once again. Uh, uh, let's start with your thoughts on, on, on the picture stories of, um, on the front page of the Punch newspaper and indeed Daily Trust. But I, I hope our guys can show us the Punch newspaper. Um, I mean, we see the weapons, weapons. Um, you can see this is not even, we're not talking about army. We're talking about civil defense here. And if this can be what the civil defense will be using on election day, then imagine what uh, uh, the Nigerian army and police will be using. I mean, this looks like some SWAT, SWAT team from an American movie. But, Chile Johnson, we saw a show of force before the presidential election. Convoys of Nigerian soldiers, some of them even filming their own personal videos, warning those who were coming out to, to rig elections and to cause trouble with thugs to be to be aware that they were on ground, but what did we see on election day? These guys were nowhere to be found in most cases, not all cases. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Jerry Johnson? We need these people in collision centers, the world collision centers. That's where you want these um, people to be. But what you have just seen is just a PR for these security agencies to justify their budget. At the end of the day, we you send your reporter to go around during the election, I'm not too sure you are going to see these this, um, this security agencies in the polling unit. I've always raised this question. Where do we need to secure? Elections are not rigged at the polling unit, even though it starts at those processes. We have seen that elections are rigged at the collision center. But what do we have at the collision center? If you have the collision center, you use the local government secretariat as the coalition center. So you have given a head start and advantage to the party that controls the state and the local government structure. So as far as I'm concerned, this is just um, these security agencies to justify to justify their, their, their budget that they are spending 
they are spending money to preserve and protect democracy. As as far as I'm concerned, I, 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 I'm just seeing that they are just playing to the gallery. Um, in any case, um, were the security just able to prevent some places in, in imposing curfew without having the authority to impose curfew on the rights of the citizen to move left, right, and center? Kofi, you and them, you and them, Messi, I wonder how you people got to the office this morning. Because where you are, I guess, is one of the areas in which the traditional ruler imposed curfew on people getting going about their normal business so as far as the security uh, pictures you see even the pictures if you know you know if you if you understand what i mean if you engage all those pictures are paid for they are just pr they are not newsworthy they are not newsworthy picture they are paid for to justify the budget that these agencies are spending on security protecting democracy who audited the money that was spent for the presidential election after the election what happened we saw what happened in the collision center we saw what happened across the land and bread of Nigeria. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not impressed and I'm not pet up. Well, i also like you to share your thoughts on the leadership. I mean, the headline that, you know, you have 14 states uh, which are really in a dramatic contest uh, for the governorship yeah. elections. And uh, Lagos is, you know, one of it. Uh, Bauchi, Kaduna, Gombe, Delta, Damawa, Rivers, Kanu, Eboing, Enugu, Ogun, Oyo, Sokoto, Nasarawa, Amongst others. Now, do you really agree with this caption? Is there really going to be yeah, do, any sort of drama? Yeah, if, if, if you understand, if you see that now, this is when people say politics is local. You see a lot of things we play up concerning gubernatorial election. In actual sense, it's not out of place for a party to have won the presidential election outrightly um, to win a state outrightly and then for the party to lose out in the gubernatorial election because there are so many local dynamics to the election. So like has been pointed out based on the intelligence that has been gathered by the reporter of um, the leadership newspaper, Ogun State is the toss up, Nasarawa State is a toss up, um, um, Lagos is a dead eat, um, um, Kanu is, 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 is a battleground, Bauchi, you know, the gladiators contesting in Bauchi. So all of these things that have been uh, rivers, for example, rivers. There is a lot of people that are grieved, um, that are grieved. One, allegedly based on the on the manipulation of the February 25th general elections in, in River State, and there are people that have put their foot on the ground that they set the record straight. So there is no doubt that you, these dynamics will play out. And don't forget that some of the governors are handing their tenor. So as a result of the end of the afternoon, new governors are coming in. So there are a lot of things that will come to play. I agree with I agree with I agree with that report in totality. Because if you look at Ogun, you look at you look at Oyo, for example, Oyo that was a clear court victory for PDP. If anyone has told you, uh, I've spoken about this in, in, in four months' time, four months ago, six months ago, three months ago. But you saw what played out with presidential election result and then the National Assembly election, where APC almost cleared all, all of the states. So it will, it will embolden those that won the election and those that lost, they will be leaking their own. So I agree with, with, that particular, with that particular report. It's going to be interesting. But what we want to happen is for us to secure the critical infrastructure of democracy, which is the votes. Let whoever emerge, emerge through the ballot system. Let it emerge through the votes. Leaders are elected from the polling units, not from not from the coalition center, not by the electoral body. The moment we start voting, by the by the end of voting, if you do everything under no massacre, by the end of voting, the winner will have emerged. The winner will have emerged because what the beauty of it is, of this representative democracy is that when I'm going to vote, I don't know the outcome. But as I'm voting, all of us are voting. And whoever emerges through that voting process automatically becomes becomes the elected representative of people. And when people emerge through fair, free, and fair democratic process, then you have a fair and a responsible public governance. But when people emerge through crooked means, that's why you have crooked, crooked, crooked um, delivery of of, of of delivery boost of democracy because they are not accountable. They knew that they did not get the mandate of the people. They got through office through crooked means, so they will be accountable to those that got them into power. And I hope, and I hope, the security agents will understand 
that they are critical to securing democracy. And how do we secure the democracy? Whoever he, the, the people that we assume responsibility of leadership of state apparatus must emerge through a free and fair electoral process. All right. Uh, very interesting, uh, J.D. Johnson. I'm just enjoying your analysis here. It's like uh, eating some nice delicacy. Um, <laughs> PMB to success. It is on the front page of uh, the Leadership Friday. Uh, he's saying uh, to his successor, sustain um, an anti-corruption fight. Is this to you, from what you see playing out, going to be possible and is it feasible? And does the president have a tangible anti-corruption fight to hand over to any successor, in your opinion? The president is living in self-delusion. I've said it is in the public domain. It's in, on the anti-corruption drive of this administration from inception. I've done, I can tell you for, for a fact, I've done nothing less than 20 programs talking about the anti-corruption drive of this administration. And I've said that they are just going to the gallery, that they were only fighting corruption on the pages of newspaper. What, what successful prosecution do you have? What institution did this? We knew when Obasanjo came, a team loved him. There were institutions that were established. EFCC, ICPC, agencies were established. And we knew ministers under Obasanjo that were prosecuted. We knew Inspector General of Police that was prosecuted. Minister of Passenger, Governors that were prosecuted. We knew. No doubt. Some will say that they switch on it. Well, that's, 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 that's it. That's another perspective to enjoy. We saw all of that under Passenger administration. Now, what kind of um, um, anti corruption drive did you see that this administration, this present administration that came into bed in 2005, what kind of anti corruption drive did they? All we see is that money was recovered. Yet we are borrowing money. The money that were recovered from who? Who are those that those money were recovered from? Who are those that have been prosecuted over corruption cases in Nigeria? But what we see is that those stories were slammed on the pages of newspaper, and the media will have washed their, their spaces with those stories without any corresponding investigation to attest to whether in actual sense um, those money that were recovered or those that have been accused of corruption were actually tried and prosecuted. We have a situation under this administration where somebody was 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 con was convicted, was almost convicted, and because of technical issue, the person his case his case was thrown out, and then the person later emerged as the chief whip, as the as the chief whip of the of the of the of the night assembly. He's even projecting himself to be the Senate president. So what type of corruption? And someone said, you know what? You recall when people said that if you Want your corrupt? If the national chairman of APC then, who happens to be a senator elect and the former governor of Edo State, said, as long as you come to APC, your sins will be forgiven. If you have corrupt cases, I'm saying what what is there in the public domain. So what is the president saying? He's playing to the gallery. The reality will dawn on him because now we will discover that nobody is coming to us rock again. The attention has shifted to the president elect. So everybody will be going to the defense house, and the president will live under the delusion that he has subjected himself to in the last eight years with respect to fight the corruption. Those corruption were just fighting on the page of newspaper. You know, they campaign on that, and they have to justify why they got the mandate of the people for the last eight years. Well, um, I'd like you to also share your thoughts on this. Is on the leadership newspaper. It talks about the fact that aviation workers in Nigeria have sued the federal government or are suing the federal government over airports concessioning and the fact that 150 billion areas have not been paid. Uh, <clears throat> GDA, how does this really make you feel? And do you think that there's any hope in all of the suing? Is it even necessary in the first instance? Well, government has a responsibility to pay the areas of the workers. That's their liability. They should. But if you ask me this, I'll tell you that there is a need for us. There are a lot of things that we need to privatize in terms of um, government has no business um, in, in, in the vision sector. Allow the public just regulate and allow the public um, to operate and manage this, this sector. All you need to do, if you've traveled through the length and breadth of this country, and then if you traveled outside of Nigeria and you see the way we run, we run our vision sector, you just wonder whether something is actually wrong with us as a people. As far as I'm concerned, if you see what happened in telcos, in, in the telcos, and then if you see what happened in other sectors that we allow the private to participate in, we see that there are better service delivery and reduce 
a lot of wastages that you have and a lot of redundancy that you have in, in, in government managed institution. So I want us to privatize. If they said they privatize NNPC, no doubt we have not seen what has been done to that effect. So let's really privatize the aviation, the aviation sector. But whatever liability the government is going to workers, the workers will not want you to privatize because they are feeding fat from 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 the redundancy, from the mismanagement, and from the unprofessionalism that characterize the management of this of this of these various institutions that are involved in the aviation sector. So as far as I'm concerned, I want us to privatize, but government must also fulfill its own part of the bargain, pay the areas, and don't give them the, the, the reason for them to go to court. If the areas are not paid, they have a right to go to court. They, need, they have a right to approach the court for the court to adjudicate on the matter. And the court should look at the merit of the case and adjudicate as proper. However, is it a government that respects the decision of, of the court system, which is therefore is, is an open debate uh, everybody knows whichever side he belongs to. There's a particular story which, in one of the pages of the newspaper, where the, the state governor is insisting that the attorney general of the federation and the central bank governor should be tried for contempt of court. And I agree with them in totality. When the chief law officer of the state is himself the person that is not actually uh, putting in place instrument to ensure the enforcement of the decision of the court, what do you have? When the chief lawmaker, the chief law enforcer is the chief lawbreaker. Then you have you have chaos in the in the society. So, I agree. Let's privatize. Okay, um, a lot to look at. Um, let's talk about concession of airports. So, you know, we'll try to you know reduce our talk on the parties uh, today. Um, but the, the airports concession is a big one that some people are looking forward to with some sort of um, expectation, uh, so that it may be a way of having these airports that government has uh, you know invested money in through huge loans. Uh, have them work, uh, but the airport workers, aviation workers, are not uh, in support of this, and they have proceeded to sue the federal government over these proposed concession of airports. Um, are you? Are you, do you think that uh, the, the workers have a point here? That you know, um, they may become the victims if this concession goes ahead. They have a right. They have a right to go to approach the court, and the country also has a right to allow the private sector to participate. Like I've said, the, a Nigerian own one of the largest airports in Great Britain. I can't recall his name now. So we look, if you look at, if you look at uh, MM2, which was, um, which was considered to by Courtney, you compare MM2 to MM1, if you have traveled to the local wing, and you look at what is available in terms of facility, in terms of operation, and in terms of management, um, you will you will understand what we are saying. There's a need for us to concede. If those ones want to go to court, they have a right to go to court and let the court look at the merit of the case. Government should pay the areas, but there's a need for government to take its hands off a lot of things. Like I've said earlier, if you look at the telcos industry, where is Nitel today? Nitel moved to MTel. Where is MTel today uh, compared to the likes of um, other 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 actors and players in the, in the telcos industry? So. I don't want to mention that name because they didn't pay your organization for advert. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, uh, just quickly as uh, we course this conversation down again, uh, there are several interesting headlines that we uh, need to look at. Another one talks about the issue of uh, uh, Naira and fuel scarcity, inflation that's been pushed as 24 million Nigerians uh, are going to be moved into hunger. Do you think that this is actually real or it's just uh, you know, a pepper statement? 24 million Nigerians there, getting into hunger. There's an environmental news. There's an environmental newspaper which is a fresh, which is a fresh bread to what we are doing, which you read, where EcoBank and IIT partners to support 16,000 users in agriculture. Mercy, Kofi, you and I will go to the market. We knew what has happened to the price of goods and services. We knew it's clear. And 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 then so it's 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 very clear for us to understand that when you have scarcity of of goods and too much funds are running after those goods, you have you have you have you have you have you have inflation. Um, every of the actions of the government in the past has contributed for us to have hyperinflation. Not even we are even having the double digit inflation. So a lot of people have been pushed down into the into 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 poverty line. So it's clear, it's clear for everybody to see. 
except you don't go shopping, except you don't go to the market. If you look at the price, price index of commodity products, it's clear for anybody to see that there is, there is, there is in the last in the last eight years we we have we have we have moved further down the the, the 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 poverty the poverty line and it will not get better it will not get better next year you see with let's talk about the currency exchange you know the value of money that people have lost i i used we use money to buy money doing that doing that until the this until the judgment of the supreme court and the compliance with it this week a week after by the by, by 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 the actors and players in the banking industry. Everybody used money to buy money. You need five thousand. You use you use one thousand, one thousand five hundred to buy the money. So over time, people. Are, I, I think I well, whether it was your program where uh, one of the public commentators said he got a hundred thousand for he got a hundred thousand for whether one at twenty five thousand. I have to pay twenty five thousand. So where is that twenty five thousand coming from? All of this money we are getting. Where is it going to come from? And even when you look at this policy, I've said it over time. Look, the money they are collecting on trying to, for us to be cashless, it's, it's putting for that body, it's eating deep into your money because you're not paying attention. You pay six, you pay six naira seventy cover for telco charges. And I tell you, if you do, if you do, let's say if you do a 100 billion transaction in a day, that's six naira seventy cover times 100 million transaction in a day. Plus the 20 naira or 25 naira that the banks will collect as their charges. If you put that over, so who is paying for who? So we have a system that has that has been put in place to take money from from the mass and put it in the hands of the elite. So the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. So there are a lot of things, there are a lot of conversation we are going to have as soon as we are through with the electoral, as, as soon as we are through with the election and new government comes into place. Because when people begin to look at some of these policies of government, they have different forms of indirect taxes. They have different types of indirect taxes that have been imposed on you and I, that, are, that is taking our money, but because you are not paying attention, because those money are in units, six naira, 70 cover, it makes no difference. Oh, 20 naira. But if you take 20 naira from 100 million Nigerians, you know what it amounts to in every of the transactions they make. And if, if you are getting quality service in return, for some of this revenue the government is making, if you are getting quality service in return, there is no doubt about that. You pay for what you have. In other climes, people pay 40, 45 percent of their income as taxes, but they get that in return in terms of good services, in terms of good infrastructure, in terms of good health care, in terms of other things that they can enjoy in the society. But what do we have to show for all of the money that they are collecting from our hands? It's for us to have people threatening you. Is for non-state actors to have more power over the citizen than even state actors. It's for a ballot to. But but Gina Johnson, you you would also the, the democracy. It's for it's for it's for the chairman of a Johnson. You'd also want to, to agree with me that the tax our tax collection regime is very weak. I mean, I, I'm not sure we're collecting you know the taxes that we should collect. I'm not talking about the extra, but. Uh, if you look at the, the percentage... One, the one we are collecting, <laughs> I, I agree with you, the one we are collecting, <laughs> what are we doing with the one we are collecting? I'm asking you, the one, the, the revenue that are being generated, what are we doing with the revenues that are being generated? It's the question I'm asking. If you say, okay, our tax regime is poor, is this, is that. Okay, no doubt about that. But the little one you are collecting, justify why you are collecting it so that people will know that you are spending this money judiciously and you prosecute whoever is not paying the taxes. The interesting thing is that it is people that are not paying the taxes that are also in charge of leadership. You know that. Uh, you're telling me I recall now. The I, I recall the president-elect said in one of his colloquium that we need to, we need to expand the, 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 the tax, the tax dragnet to capture a lot of people. And he mentioned his name that even I... But Latin, if I'm not paying, I should be captured so that I should pay. So it's there, it's there in the public domain. It's not uh, whether you are for this or you are for this. What we are saying is that let there be a justification. For, I'll give you an example. What is the justification for the collection of the toll that have been collected on toll lucky toll gate for many, many years? For many, many years. It's, it's an axis you go through. Mercy, you live in Niger. So it's an axis you and you work in BI. So it's an axis you go to, you've gone through many, 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 many years. Once you leave the token, tell me, tell me the tell me. In fact, you even go through Ashi 
in going through the payment. It's in Nigeria that the cost of collecting the taxes is even much more than the taxes that are collected. Oh. All right. All right, Jerry Johnson, we'll just take a, um, a final one before uh, we say goodbye to you. And of course, um, look forward to having you uh, back on the program. The now feel scarcity uh, and inflation is pushing 24 million Nigerians into hunger, according to the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization. It's on the front page of uh, Leadership Friday. Um, while we have our eyes on the elections, this is a very important aspect of our, our, our national life that some people may go to bed hungry uh, tonight. And even if you know uh, the elections are concluded and the best candidate wins at the end of the day, uh, we'll still have to grapple with, uh, uh, with hunger. Um, uh, Jilly Johnson, 24 million um, Nigerians. What hope do these people have? Um, I mean, the, the hope is definitely not coming from the government, is it? Nara, scarcity, and fuel scarcity are driving factors, including inflation, to push these people into hunger. Jilly, what, what um, hope? You see, they are just doing conservative with It's not 20, they are more than 24 million Nigerians. And you know the interesting thing? If Kofi if I have been able to convince at least uh, 9 million of those people, you know, I'll be the president elect today. If I've been able to convince 9 million out of even that 24 million, um, and that's why you see that the incidence of vote buy is very, very high. And that's why it's a key component part of our, of our democratic experience. Because one of the things that we have seen since 1999 to date is not an exception. To, to the APC government, what we have seen since 1999 to be that across the state, across the at the state of the federation, uh, including the federal capital territory, even though the United States chairman is trying to call the federal capital territory one of the states in one of the press conferences, he just said that seven states. I didn't know where, where he got that from. Is to perpetuate poverty. And once you perpetuate poverty, an hungry man cannot think straight. It's clear. An hungry man cannot think straight. So we have a situation whereby people justify collection of revenue, people justify that they are investing in projects, and you see a lot of people walking on the street, living in hunger, living in abject poverty. And but, you know, J.J. Johnson, when we talk about poverty, I mean, because this is, you know, another dimension to this, J.J., if you can hear us, is the fact that if we look at this, there's been several policies of government as to, uh, I mean, these policies are targeted at tackling the issue of poverty. Remember, you know, several statements and policy statements has been put out. You also have different programs, social intervention programs by this government. Eight years, you know, almost eight years already because a few more months uh, before the handover. And all of these programs are, you know, uh, were made and formulated to take care of uh, the issue of poverty. And so why then do we still talk about, you know, 24 million persons uh, getting into poverty? Is this new 24 persons or uh, what exactly is it? And then, you know, it feels like the government has not been thinking because that's how you're sounding. I think that there's been several policies that the government has put in place. And, you know, there's been statements that's been put out also to tackle the issue of poverty for the past eight years. Let's call it eight years already. Uh, Jide, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mercy. Um, <laughs> there's, no that, there's no poverty that has been tackled by any administration. But, but you agree with me that there's been policies of government. I mean, there's all, you, you know them. For instance, the social intervention program. They've um, succeeded in doing is to, what they've succeeded in doing is to perpetuate poverty. And as a result of that, we have seen a lot of Nigerians impoverished under this present democratic dispensation, which I call civilian administration and not a democratic governance. Because what we have seen is a transition from military government to people in civilian dresses. They still have the, the, the tendencies of all the military. They still have all the tendencies. They still have it. All right, Julia, we have to go at this point in time. We do appreciate you uh, for being part of our show this morning, The Breakfast, and off the press to be precise, we look forward to sharing your thoughts on more national critical issues as you know we proceed in 2023. Thank you so much once again. All right, so still ahead on The Breakfast, we have uh, conversations uh, concerning the elections, the governorship and state houses of assembly elections, especially in Nigeria's commercial nerve center 
of Lagos to look at what lies ahead, expectations, and of course, um, uh, what are some of the fears uh, that voters may have ahead of the Lagos governorship polls. We'll also look at what's happening in other states around the country. Please stay with us.